Many traders look to utilize crypto derivatives to increase their exposure through leverage and shorting. But are these contracts actually hurting digital asset markets? Today we're going to be trying to find out if the derivatives markets are actually hurting Bitcoin. And what better place to start than with the Bitcoin funding rates chart we have here on lookintobitcoin.com that you can now actually with a certain subscription reduce the resolution so you can actually see hourly funding rate data. But ultimately crypto derivative contracts, what are they? Well, they are mimicking the price of the underlying asset, which is Bitcoin. They are derived from the actual asset to allow traders and investors to try and more aggressively speculate on the market, usually through the use of leverage. Now, leverage is just essentially borrowing from the exchange to increase your exposure. 10 times leverage, for example, would allow you to turn one Bitcoin into 10 Bitcoin. Now, many traders try and implement these derivatives and leverage to try and increase their profit potential, but at the the same side are actually massively increasing their risk, especially as the odds are very much favored in those of the exchange. And as well as these, we can also see that these have funding rates. So not only is there certain associated costs with these leverage contracts, but there are also funding rates that actually charge you at set intervals, usually hourly or eight hourly, to just keep these contracts open. And we can track these funding rates to actually see that a majority of these traders are wrong quite a lot of the time. These funding rates represent if a majority of traders are long the market, betting on price increasing, or utilizing another feature of these derivative contracts, and that being shorting, which allows people to bet on the market decreasing. So we can see here when the funding rates are especially negative, indicates that a vast majority of traders are shorting the market and are paying a premium just to be able to do so. And what you can immediately see is that a vast majority of the time that we have these large downwards negative funding rate spikes is it actually marks the bottom of the local bit of Bitcoin price action. We can see our, as Bitcoin bottomed in price, we had this huge negative funding rate spike. Again, after we rallied from those lows and retraced, we had this huge negative funding rate spike. And in both instances, these marks potentially the worst time to be shorting the Bitcoin market. But the same is true for the upside. We see these huge positive Bitcoin funding rate spikes. Potentially people are getting a little bit overly greedy, trying to increase their exposure, anticipating further upside moves. And again, these usually unfortunately mark when Bitcoin actually decreases in value a little bit. So not only are these derivative contracts allowing people to increase their risk to the market, but as we can see from the data, a lot of people actually utilizing these derivatives don't actually take full advantage of them. They're losing money by using these contracts. And in an asset class, especially regarding Bitcoin, one of the best performing assets of the past decade, to be losing money in a market like this seems just pretty wasteful, especially those trying to short at the absolute bottom of the market, when in fact, if they'd have just bought actual real Bitcoin, they'd be up considerably more. What we can also do is check the open interest. Now, this is looking at the total value of open derivative contracts. And we can see here that this is fluctuating very frequently parallel with the underlying price of Bitcoin. But we can see we have these huge spikes to the upside when prices may be a little bit stagnant and then these huge decreases. Now, this is when people are potentially getting a little bit impatient, a little bit bored with price action and are trying to increase their bets on what the next move is going to be, anticipating a more volatile breakout. And we can see here, once we have these huge increases in open interest, potentially people betting on Bitcoin's price increasing or decreasing. And we have this huge volatile flush out of open interest as lots of people's contracts get liquidated, meaning they're forcefully closed out by the exchange and they lose all of the value of that contract. But what we can see here, especially if we drop to a lower resolution, is how these contracts actually increase the volatile moves on Bitcoin. If we just zoom in on the current price action, we can see here, even when Bitcoin's price is very stagnant, we get these huge drops or increases in open interest. Now, this is people just, again, taking very large speculative moves. But these unfortunately result in these weird volatile patterns in the Bitcoin price action. Lots of people may call them bar patterns. But we can see when the Bitcoin price action drops substantially, has some sideways price action, and then moves up very rapidly. These usually indicate a little bit of potential market manipulation as people are trying to flush out open interest, trying to liquidate other traders 
to potentially accumulate more or even increase their derivative contract size. Now, all of this derivative contract exposure is actually resulting in a huge negative impact on the underlying network of Bitcoin. If we just look, for example, on the 9th of August, the actual network volume that happened on the Bitcoin blockchain, we can see it was about 2.8 billion US dollars of volume on that day of actual real to real Bitcoin transactions. But going back to the open interest chart, we can see on the 9th of August, the open interest of derivative contracts exceeded $9 billion, over three times the amount of network volume just in exposure to these leveraged contracts. So why is this a bad thing? Well, ultimately it removes the ability for this capital inflows to have a positive impact on the Bitcoin price. If, for example, half of that $9 billion in volume was just used to buy underlying spot BTC, that would likely have a huge positive impact on the Bitcoin price. And if we look at other on-chain indicators, the more we take away from the real network value of Bitcoin, the less we actually utilize the technology that the cryptocurrencies was created for, just for our own greed, just to try and increase our own profits, it reduces the effectiveness of these indicators. And like we said, these contracts also allow Bitcoin to be shorted. Now the CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, actually launched Bitcoin futures traded contracts to potentially allow exposure to more traditional traders in the markets. And a lot of people I remember at the time were quite bullish at this launch, believing that finally traditional markets have a way to gain some exposure to the crypto industry. Maybe this is going to have a positive impact on the Bitcoin price. The launch of these CME Bitcoin futures practically marked the exact peak of the previous bull market as everyone just used them as an opportunity to short the industry. Also, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to ensure you're receiving all of our content as soon as it's released. And make sure to check out all of the resources we've discussed today, as well as the many more that are all available on lookintobitcoin.com, your number one source for Bitcoin information. And we haven't even yet discussed the risk associated with keeping your capital on some of these exchanges. Obviously, if you buy real Bitcoin, you can just transfer that BTC to your own hardware wallet, keep it safe and actually own the assets that you have purchased. Not your keys, not your coin is a famous saying, just basically implying that if you're keeping your capital on these exchanges, there is third party or counterparty risk in doing so. Just look at FTX, which unfortunately resulted in billions of user funds being lost just for having their funds on the exchange. Again, this isn't to try and say that these traders were wrong for holding their assets on the exchange. Obviously, FTX was to blame for this collapse. But if they were to have purchased BTC and moved it to their own wallet, as well as many other crypto assets, then they could have potentially avoided as much of the downside risk in doing so. So just to summarize, Bitcoin derivatives mimic the price of BTC and allow traders to bet on future price movements of the asset without actually earning it. And these contracts allow users to also bet on prices decreasing by shorting the market, potentially also with leverage, which like we said, is essentially just borrowing capital to increase your exposure, even when the odds are stacked against you. And looking at the historical data, a vast majority of these traders are actually wrong a lot of the time. And these derivative markets also unfortunately seem to be removing genuine network volume and increasing the volatile swings while also reducing the effectiveness of on-chain data and this isn't even to mention the counterparty risk with keeping your funds on a lot of these crypto exchanges. If you like this video, then please visit lookintobitcoin.com where you can also consider becoming a site subscriber to gain access to professional resolution charts, advanced macro and portfolio data tools, in-depth crypto industry reports, live and personalized indicator alerts, private trading view scripts and more all for a fraction of the standard industry price. And let me know what your thoughts are on these derivative contracts, both in the comments down below and on social media. Do you trade these? Do you use leverage? Do you short the market? Do you have success in doing so? As I said, let me know. I look forward to reading and replying to all of them. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.